Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word. We're in the end of Luke chapter 24. Not quite all the way to the end, but this incredible revelation of the resurrection as Jesus is risen from the dead. And he appeared to these two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus. And as he did that, and as he revealed himself from the Moses and the prophets, and then he broke bread with them, their eyes were open, their minds were open, their hearts were just overwhelmed. They go running back to Jerusalem to be able to tell the eleven. And that's where the narrative picks up. They are back inside the room, speaking to, it's true, it's true. He's risen. We, we saw him. And as they're as they're speaking, Jesus shows up. I, I said a little bit of that last video, but it is something that's just incredible going forth of being able to say that great phrase that maybe could be a prayer each and every day, hey, Jesus, show up. <laughs> when you show up, things happen. When you show up, God's presence is just amplified. When you, when you show up, things change when you show up. Whew, we are overwhelmed, so overwhelm us. And so within this, Jesus shows up. Luke chapter 24, verse 36, shows up into the lives, into the faith, into the disbelief, into the fears of the disciples, and sets every bit of the things that I just said aside. Verse 36 of chapter 24 while they were still talking about this, about the disciples coming back from Emmaus saying it's true, right? Jesus himself, not somebody else, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see, a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet, and while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, they were overwhelmed. He asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Ghosts don't eat. Ghosts don't sit and have a meal. Ghosts don't have, frankly, the reality of touching hands and feet and not going through them, right? But this is flesh and bones. This is Jesus. This is resurrected himself. It is I myself. It's the one that you've been traveling with for these last three years. Think about the scene. Think about the scene, the, the grief and the sorrow and the disbelief and the, and the little bit of awkwardness a little bit of, what should I say? Jesus isn't the elephant in the room, but he's kind of the elephant in the room. Peter's looking at him like, does he does he know that I denied him? <laughs> of course he does. He predicted it. Do, what does he think about me? All these other disciples says, does he, what, what will, what should I say? I ran. I deserted him at the hour he needed me. And they were in disbelief because of joy and amazement. But that's why Jesus' first words to them are shalom. Right? Peace be with you. The full account, the full revelation of peace, actually peace is with you. I'm standing. It is I myself. Peace itself is standing in your midst. Don't fear. Don't be troubled. Don't doubt. Just believe. Be amazed. Peace is with you. Verse 44, he said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. And this is where we get to see Jesus told them, he said to them, and it was written, and now it's revealed. It's the full revelation of Christ. He said what was written. He fulfilled what was written. And now he's stating right in front of them, proclaiming to them the word of God. He is the word of God become flesh. And he is dwelling among them. The full revelation 
of Jesus. And this is what it says in verse 45. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. And he told them, this is what is written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. So that, and this gives us our purpose. This gives us our push. This gives us our resurrected new life. For what reason? Repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. That's our walk of faith, that we repent of our sins, but that we can actually be forgiven, that peace is in our midst, that Jesus himself shows up. He shows up in our sin. He shows up in our repentance. He shows up in our forgiveness. He is that forgiveness. That forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses. You've seen it. Now you're going to tell it. You are witnesses of these things, and I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So here we get the instructions again as we listen to Jesus to be able to say, oh, it's going to be his timing. He's going to deliver. He's going to put forth what he wants to accomplish in and through us. So wait in the city. But here is that incredible direction, the full revelation of Christ of what was said in Moses and the prophets and the Psalms and all the scriptures is now fulfilled in Jesus. And his fulfillment sends us into what our fulfillment is, what our purpose is, to be able to walk in repentance and forgiveness, to be witnesses that Jesus died for our sins. But he rose, and that means that he is with us. That means that we are forgiven. That means that we are dead in our sins and trespasses, but... But thanks be to God, as Paul puts it in, his, in Romans. But thanks be to God, he has made us alive in Jesus Christ. How can he make us alive if he's still dead? He's not. Our sins are dead. They are gone. As we drown them in our baptisms, as it says in Romans 5, Romans 6. We've been killed. We've been, we're dead with Christ. But now we are raised to new life. And so repent of your sin. But also bask in the forgiveness that is in Christ, because he's alive, and he shows up in your sin <laughs> and pushes it away, and he shows up in your forgiveness so that you can just proclaim and have joy and, and, and a joy-filled life, life to the full. That's what he's called us to, a life full of repentance and forgiveness, but a life full of witnessing, seeing what God has done in our lives, but telling what God has done in our life. That's what we are witnesses. Two parts. We've seen and we proclaim. We've seen and we proclaim. Let us be witnesses this day that we preach Christ crucified and risen. Sins done away with and victory accomplished in the resurrection of our own lives in Christ. It's going to be a blessed day. But I pray that the circumstances and situations of this world don't drown out the reality and don't, help, don't get us to disbelieve or to, to doubt, but rather be filled with joy and amazement of what God has done for us in Christ. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, yep. But thanks be to God. He's sent his son Jesus for you to walk with you. He is alive and he is with you. What a blessed day that is. Take care.